Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a summer horror recommendations video. So let's just jump right in. <laughs> so summer is one of my favorite seasons in the year. It's just my favorite. It's when I feel my best. It's a little bit different this year because everything is just so weird right now and just so many things happening that I feel like it's just not your usual summer. But either way, it's hot, the sun is out, I love it. I have six recommendations here and then three mentions that we'll get to towards the end of the video. These are in no particular order. I'm just mentioning them. They're not like from least favorite to favorite or anything like that. I love these all the same and they were, I believe they were all five star reads for me. Uh, one of them, my rating has actually changed throughout the years and we'll get to that one in a little bit, but this is in no particular order. First one I'm gonna mention is The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. I loved this story so much. It's just so nostalgic and it has such an 80s vibe. I mean, even the cover, it's like a library book kind of and then it has like the deckled edges. I know that not a lot of people like deckled edges but I just feel like it adds a little something to the book but this isn't about the formatting of the book. This is a coming of age story. Uh, we're following Jake in uh, the 1980s and he is recounting uh, one of the summers that impacted him the most in his life. Uh, his uncle, which, is, which was like his best friend, invited him to be part of the Saturday Night Ghost Club where he would just talk about the occult and just things that were happening around the town, conspiracy theories. Yeah, it was one of those memorable times in his life and it's just, just following him along this memorable time. I enjoyed this one so much. It was heartfelt. It was creepy. They had ghost stories. It had friendship. This is just such an amazing book. Next, I have Savages by Greg F. Giffoon. Giffoon, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that last name. I loved this book. So this follows a group of people that are on vacation and they um, are on this ship or on this boat on a fishing trip and a storm hits and leaves them stranded on the waters with a small raft. While on this raft they're trying to survive uh, for a couple days and they end up coming upon this uncharted island. Obviously they get off this island and they're just trying to survive but there are secrets and spooky things within this island. This was such a great read. The reason why I love this is because it has that um, deserted island story behind it. You have deserted areas or buildings that they find. There's just something evil in this island and it is out for blood. So that's the story. I highly recommend this one. I mean I highly recommend all of them because they're summer recommendations. Duh. Sometimes I just talk to talk. Okay next I am going to mention Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. I remember that my first Fright Friday and right now I only have two Fright Fridays up, but I remember talking about this book and reviewing this book. And I remember when, for, when I first read this book, uh, like two or three years ago, I believe it was three years ago, I wasn't that impressed. I just, I wasn't a lover of supernatural and of un, of things that are not believable, but through the years, I have not stopped thinking about this book. This is a coming of age story that follows these group of boys one summer in the 1960s. It's just full of friendship, of creepy things, of supernatural stuff. There's a school setting, there's farm settings. It is just incredible. It's everything that you can want in a coming of age horror story. And I just thought it was perfect because it does take place in the summer. And while reading this book, I remember reading those summer nights, which are my favorite. I love a good summer night. And there is plenty of summer nights in, in this book, duh, Summer of Night. But it was so much fun following these group of boys 
just trying to beat something evil in the town. My next recommendation, I feel goes without saying, but I felt like if I didn't put it in this video, I would feel like a traitor and almost like I don't like you enough. And I really haven't, besides my wrap ups and I don't know if I've done a favorite, uh, a King favorites video yet. I don't think I have. Uh, but so yeah, I've only mentioned it in a wrap up some time ago. And I just, I must include it in a Summer Rex. And that is It by Stephen King. Please do not be intimidated by the size of this. This is just one of the most comforting stories that I have ever read. I just... I just felt like I was wrapped in a blanket while Stephen King is telling me a story by the fire. I, when I like a Stephen King book a lot, like Pet Cemetery, Lizzie's Story, this one, um, which is another one that I love from him, uh, Christine, those books just make me feel like he's telling me a story himself and by the fireside. I guess I like a lot of coming of age stories in the summer. I mean, that's one of my favorite tropes is that a trope it's coming of age stories I just find them so wonderful and horror and kids to me it's just such a wonderful combination because I feel like kids just even teenagers uh, they just don't fear things or they go after that fear they're more head-on with their fear fears and I just love that about the books you guys know what this is about coming of age story group of kids that are like outcast almost they're like the nerds or just the 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 ones that aren't very popular in high school they get together and they're trying to defeat this evil entity that's killing kids in the town of Derry and it's just so wonderful there's so many layers to it it's messed up I, I cried so hard with this book I can't even explain to you how hard I cried I love this edition that I have back here of it it's one of my favorites that's why I have it on display but this story is just so wonderful and if you have a chance to listen to it on audiobook I feel like the way to go with this one is on audiobook because it's such a big book, it almost feels like you're listening to a movie, so it makes it go by quicker. So what I did was, I was actually moving in the middle of packing and stuff when I read this book. And I tried to do a vlog reading it, but because I was moving and stuff, I just, I didn't pick up the camera enough. And it just made it go by so much quicker. And because I was doing so much, like packing and cleaning and all that stuff, because I was doing that, I was able to listen to it in in good amounts of chunks. So that's what I would advise to you if you're an audiobook listener and you're the type that listens to audiobooks while you're doing chores. That's the way to go with this. I enjoyed it so much. I want to reread this. I actually want to reread all of these, but mostly this one because it's just such a classic and such a good story. Next up we have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I read this a couple months ago and fell in love with it. Here we're following a group of housewives. They are in a book club where they read about true crime and darker stories. And Patricia, which is our main character, comes across this man that's new to the neighborhood. He seems to be the nephew, I believe, or some sort of relation to a neighbor of hers and dark things start happening within their town and across the town so she's on a mission to find out what it is nobody wants to believe uh the stories that she's saying this is just phenomenal it's full of um small town gossip or like neighborhood gossip it's full of the 80s or 90s more 90s uh nostalgia which i truly enjoyed grady hendrix is known for his pop culture references in his books and i just i loved that about it i was a denarian in the 90s so i remember those very vividly they were in my development stages of becoming a teen and being a teen so that really hit close to my heart and i loved it because of that um, and then just all the friendship and family politics that there is. It was just fantastic. If you haven't read it, please do so. There's vampires. There's just amazingness in this book. And the last one, but definitely 
not the least, we have Devil's Creek by Todd Kelsing. I do have a Fright Fridays all dedicated to this book. I will link it up in the cards. If you haven't read this, please, what are you doing? Please do so. This is told in different timelines. We have the timeline where Imogene, which is the grandmother of the book, she is trying to save her family from this cult that her daughter has joined and they are sacrificing kids and also doing just not very good things to the kids like the leader of the cult is and so she's trying to save them before they sacrifice them to this god and then we fast forward to the present time and we have jack which is emojis grandson and the struggles that he faces being one of the survivors of this cult and having to go back to this town and set things straight while this dark evil thing is being unleashed upon the town. It was so fun. Uh, one of my favorite characters this year has to be Emoji and how badass she is, how she just tries to really save her family and even beyond the grave is trying to save her family. This was a wild ride. It was dark. It was creepy. It was just everything that you would want in a horror book. And then these next three books that I want to mention are books that I have not read yet, but I am hoping to get to before this summer is over. The first book is Night Shoot by David Sodergren, and I actually have two of his books as a recommendation in this video. Again, I can't recommend these because uh, they're good. I'm just recommending them because they have that summer feel to them, or I would feel like it's the perfect summer book. So that's why I'm recommending them, not necessarily because I know how they are, but I am also recommending them because a lot of people that I trust in the horror community have talked, had have praised these books. So that is also why I am throwing them in here because I trust their opinion and they gave rave reviews about this one. So Night Shoot is one of them. This deals with a manor and a group of filmmakers that break into this manor. And there are things in this manor that, these, that this group of people unlock and everything goes from there. I don't know too much about this other than that and I don't want to know too much because for the millionth time I am the type of reader that likes to go in blind so the least that I know about a book the better sometimes that's good sometimes that but that's bad because I, I sometimes when I go into a story out into a what into a story I'm so lost that I wish I would have read the synopsis but either way that's just how I like to go into them. So that's all I know about this one. But to me, it just it just feels summery. I don't know why, like a summer night, like a creepy summer night, maybe. I'm not sure, but whatever. And then the next one by David Sodergren that I also want to read and would want to recommend is The Forgotten Island. And I think this is like a zombie uh, kind of story. And it is set in an island. Yeah, it's the Forgotten Island and there's dark secrets in the jungle. So I this is I, I want to read this one prior to the other one because I mean I've wanted to for a long time. And I was actually in a, a group reading group or a buddy read group for the night shoot and I never read it because I'm the worst like that. But these two definitely are on the list for summer horror and then the last one that I'm going to mention which I was trying to read before I did this video so I can recommend recommends like by knowledge recommended but I didn't get to it but I'm hoping and crossing my fingers and I'm going to push to read it by the end of this summer and that is Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez and this is said to be a slasher kind of novel so I'm getting because of camp slaughter I'm getting like 80s camp slasher kind of story so I wanted to recommend this one now prior to this video going up we are going to have the announcement video for the horror in 24 and I wanted to point out a couple of prompts that you can use these books towards uh, not all prompts but these are just some that might make it that can make it to your TBR for some of these prompts. So for red on the cover, almost all of these can be used. I mean, you have Saturday Night Ghost Club, you have The Fire, you have these two with have red on the cover, Camp Slaughter and The Forgotten Island. You have Savages. I feel like the majority of the horror books have some sort of red. 
this edition and I believe the majority of the editions except the holder uh, have read on the covers of it and then Devil's Creek has this red sky on it. Then we have Haunted House and Ghost Story. Obviously you could use a Saturday Night Ghost Club Saturday Night Ghost Club for that prompt and I think that's the only one that I have so far for that one. Then we have Supernatural Creatures and I'm telling you that almost all of these books can be used for Supernatural Creatures. Devil's Creek. Hello. The Devil. Is he a Supernatural Creature? You decide. Savages can be used as supernatural creature because there is no werewolf, vampire, or zombie in this, but there is a supernatural element to this, so you can use this one. Also, Summer of Night is full of supernatural. We have worms and things like that that are supernatural. Obviously, it, they are dealing with a supernatural entity. So this one can be used as well. If what I know about the Forgotten Island is true, I believe there are zombies in here. So correct me if I'm wrong if you've read this, but Supernatural Creature. And to be honest, there is a prompt that says your favorite childhood ghost story or your favorite childhood horror story. Um, if you're like me, like I explain in my announcement video, I wasn't allowed to read horror growing up or as a child. Um, if that's you or you just didn't read horror when you were younger for whatever reason, you didn't like it, you were scared, whatever reason, uh, besides the goosebumps that I do talk about in that one that I got off of Crystal's announcement video or TBR video, um, I would recommend Saturday Night Ghost Club because it has that nostalgia and that 80s storyline. So you can sort of cheat and do this one. It's a bunch of kids, it's a coming of age story and just put yourself in their position or I don't know, but I don't know why I get those kinds of vibes with this one, just like a like an old favorite ghost story. And I think that's all I have as far as the prompts go. I hope this was able to help you to create your TBR for the horror in 24 or just for summer altogether. I think that summer horror is some of my favorite, especially if it includes a kind of um, summer element like the beach or a uh, summer campsite or water park. Those are some of my favorites. I'm gonna add two more to this video because that's just the way we're rolling. I never have any kind of script or layout of how I wanna do a video. I just sit down and film and talk. So that's why my videos are never organized. So I'm sorry about that, but that's just how I am. We're gonna include two more books in this video because I love these books so much and it's been a while since I've mentioned them. I think the last time I mentioned them was last summer because these are super summery books. I mean, you can read them whenever, just like any of these books. But these do have an element and when I said water park just now it made me think of these and that's Kill River 1, 2, 1, 2 and then 3 I have on my TBR cart and I didn't want to crawl over there. Just know these are great summer reads. They are set in a water park. We actually begin Kill River at a summer camp and then it deviates towards the water park of evilness. So these are great. They're some of my favorite if you wanted to add it to your summer TBR. So yeah, that's it you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>